Hi everybody, in this video I want to introduce and give a brief example of the loop rule for electric potential. So imagine we have a complete circuit. I've got a 9 volt battery, I've got a 10 ohm resistor, I've got an 8 ohm resistor. The loop rule says that if you start at one point in the circuit and go all the way around the circuit and go back to the same point, that the total change in electric potential will be zero. This amounts to basically treating potential self-consistently. The electric potential at this point is whatever it is. So if I start here and then go all the way around the circuit, the total change in electric potential has to be zero. So that's the loop rule for electric potential. It seems pretty simple, but it'll be a pretty powerful tool in helping us solve circuit analysis problems. So now I want to give an example of that with this basic circuit. Now, let's say we've already gone and found the electric current. We know from the junction rule that the electric current has to be the same everywhere in this circuit because there's no place for the, the current to split. So it turns out we have a half an amp of current passing through this resistor, half an amp of current passing through this resistor, and half an amp passing through the battery uh, in this direction. All right, so let's say we already know that. All I'm just going to show you is that the uh, loop rule is self-consistent. Okay, to do that, we first need some background knowledge. Uh, we know that the voltage drop across a resistor is the product of the current passing through that resistor and the resistance of the resistor. Uh, so let's apply that rule for each of these resistors. So the voltage drop across this 10 ohm resistor, well, I've got the half amp of current, I've got the 10 ohms of resistance, half an amp times 10 ohms will give me 5 volts, and an amp times an ohm is a volt. Likewise, the voltage drop across the 8 ohm resistor will be the product of the half amp of current and the 8 ohms of resistance. That gives me 4 volts. Again, an amp times an ohm is a volt. All right, so let's just see how this uh, loop rule plays out, just as an example. So let's start at point A. I'm going to go all the way around the loop, and I'm going to sum up the changes in potential. So going from A to here, I have a 9 volt gain in electric potential. I'll just use V to represent volts. Going from here to here, I have a voltage drop of 5 volts. So the change in potential going from here to here is minus 5 volts. There's no voltage drop across this zero resistance wire segment. Likewise, no voltage drop here, no voltage drop here. So the remaining voltage drop is across the 8 ohm resistor. I have a 4 volt voltage drop there, so minus 4 volts. Those are all the changes in electric potential, assuming that these are zero resistance connecting wires with no uh, voltage drop across them. No resistance would mean no voltage drop. All right, those are all the changes in potential going around the circuit, starting here, ending here. They should all combine to give me zero, and they do, in fact, do that. Now, this is a highly contrived example. Really, we would work these things in reverse. To actually figure out the electric current, I would use the loop rule, or something equivalent to the loop rule, in order to figure out the electric current given this 9 volt battery and these resistances. All I've done is sort of assume we've already found the electric current and then shown what I mean by applying the loop rule. So uh, we will apply the loop rule in more complicated problems uh, in uh, future classes and in future examples. Thank you.